Welcome to the Link Cam TV show, a program which focuses on local agencies, municipalities, nonprofits, and current issues affecting those here in the city of Lynn. Here with me today to talk about human rights, we have Congresswoman Mu Sahua, Jake Kiao, who is uh, a candidate. Uh, uh, you were a uh, uh, running for an elected official uh, this past year. And then we also have Alex Chung, who is also involved with Jake and some of their most recent efforts for the Human Rights Commission. We'll talk about that a little bit more in depth. Um, today Today we're here to talk about human rights, um, not only just in Cambodia, but worldwide. Um, uh, Congresswoman, you have an excellent background, there's been a lot about you. Uh, just so those at home know where we're coming from, you've been a member of the Cambodian Parliament since 98, um, six years as a Minister of Women Affairs. Um, you were also, uh, in 2005, once a candidate for the Nobel Peace Prize for your efforts in trying to end sex trafficking in uh, Cambodia and Thailand, um, a woman's activist through and through, and um, a number of awards awards for your efforts in um, human rights. It's a, a pleasure to have you and an honor to have you. Um, before we get too much into the subject, let's learn a little bit about who you guys are and why you're here. Congresswoman, we'll start with you. It is an honor for me to be in Lynn, a community that is so diverse. And this is something that we cherish very much because Cambodia went through a harsh winter, a winter of a war of genocide, of more armed conflicts, and then of now a dictatorship. That's why when I came to America as a student in exile, I went back to Cambodia. And what did I bring back to Cambodia? Human rights, that freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, freedom of association. To belong to a group, it, it is a fundamental right. And that is, this has been my journey in uh, civil service, in uh, politics, and a woman in politics in Cambodia is not an easy task. Every day I see human rights violations. For example, our children who can't go to school is a human rights violation. For example, our workers who make less than $3 a day, that's a violation of human rights. For example, no access to water, that's a violation of human rights. But recently, I've been going to Freedom Park. You call it Freedom Park, where a, that was supposed to be a place where people can come and speak freely. Freedom Park has been barricaded by the government, by the police, by, by thugs for the past, since January of this year, because we in the opposition won the election of July 2013, but it was stolen from us. So we were protesting at Freedom Park for almost six months, and then the protests became so big that the government, that we don't call a government, a government that is not elected democratically, shut it down. So to me, Freedom is about your rights. And if you don't have that, when you're trying to move Cambodia forward to a democratic country, then there's nothing more dear to my life than to fight for freedom, for human rights, and to be a country where we can move forward and not be stuck in communism, in dictatorship. You're making history as we speak. Um, we're definitely going to get into some of your most recent efforts. Um, let's learn a little bit about you, Jake. Um, again, my name is Jake Keo. Um, I'm a human rights commissioner in Lynn. Uh, when I was young, I was my my rights was and my family rights were uh, um, abused by uh, the Khmer Rouge in the war and millions of other people. And I became an orphan at seven years old. They took away my parents. The human rights ex was happened in the 70s and it still exists today. And when, now that I'm growing up and I still see human rights exist, abuses in Cambodia, which really upsets me a lot. And I'm sure it upsets a lot of folks you know, around you know, in this country too. So I want to help do something about it, you know, because um, I don't want some people to suffer like I did in the past, you know, endure four years of killing fields, communist regime, you know, so many heartbreaking, you know, you know I, almost, I almost didn't make it, you know. 
Jake, I did a little bit of research on you. Your story is just among some of the most impressive that I've ever heard. Uh, from all the books, movies I've seen, um, yours ranks right up there. And I think if anybody should write a book, um, and even maybe you can do this in tandem with Hong too, um, it should be you guys. Uh, for what you've done, for what America is, and for where you are today, very, very impressive stuff. And um, again, I'm, I'm honored to have you here. Thank you. Um, Alex, let's talk a little bit about you. Um, you're playing a, a part in the Human Rights Commission here in Lynn as well. Uh, no. Uh let me make it correct. And I, I'm a resident of Middleton, but I am in and out in Lynn uh, all the time at a daily basis. I, in fact, I, I, I was a campaign manager for Jake. I used to teach at middle school, uh, at Marshall and at Breed Middle School. Uh, I know Lynn to uh, like the palm of my hand. But uh, make the matter short, I, I like to be known as a Cambodian one of the 200,000 Cambodians that happen to be fortunate that America allowed us to find this place, our new home. And now that we enjoy the freedom and the, the right, the opportunity, I want to spend some of my time and effort to export, to give back to people where I came from so that they can enjoy, so that they can you know, cherish their life uh, to the fullest. That speaks a lot to your character. Um, you know, you're just one of the many. I love that. Mm. Um, you know, here, here we are, we're discussing the Human Rights Commission in Lynn, um, and it's just like, I'm just doing my part. Um, one of many, and I, I, I just want to commend you on that, and I, I hope you keep that going as well. Um, the, the Cambodian culture is very prevalent here in Lynn. Um, I happen to think that it's one of the best cultures that are out there. I'm a big fan of the um, family ties. That's a big, huge part of it. Um, also, the fact that, um, you know, a big thing is uh, through struggle you can find strength and uh, that's very pertinent what we're talking about today uh, we're talking about a government that is um, not elected right there we're considered a dictatorship um, they have a king in place so it's a little different than how we do things in America and um, you're facing a lot of struggle here um, I dug up on the internet an old petition that was sent to President Barack Obama to highlight some of the events and some of the issues that are being um, that are ongoing over in Cambodia and uh, something that stuck out to me is that the freedom of expression in Cambodia is in a perilous state. Um, uh, Congresswoman, now this is a big thing for you. A lot of people can go in, they get knocked down, they get knocked down, they get knocked down, and then eventually they stay down. In your story, it's the exact opposite of that. Um, it, every day you hear about people who go through certain struggle, and they're too afraid to face it head on, not sure about what the outcome is or what they're going to lose in the making. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience as a Congresswoman um, in Cambodia and uh, what you really think, uh, how, how you feel the, uh, the, the freedom of expression is, is, is looked at there? I choose a particular constituency, the women of Cambodia, who represent 52% of the 17 million people in Cambodia. And if you talk about not having a voice, who else doesn't have a voice but the women, starting from when you are a little girl, when you lose, you, you, we don't know where your, your parents are because they moved, they went, they are now in Thailand, in Malaysia, looking for work. And you have to grow up on your own. Then you move on to being a child, an adolescent, and then a, a young woman. And at every single step of it, you lose your voice because of your gender. You lose your voice because of your economic status. You lose your voice because you, ha you are part of the opposition, for example. So building a voice is giving the people, especially the women, a choice. If you don't have a voice, you don't have a choice. If you don't have a choice, what's your life? You are not in control of your life. So to me, having a voice is talking also about equality. Equality, gender equality, class equality, social equality. But what is important is that when we rebuild a country that has been totally wiped out almost by 30 years of war, of armed conflict, of genocide, you have to rebuild with the voices of the people and to be uh, what is a democratic country without voices of the people. So going every day to fight for freedom and to have a voice, to me, is 
it's a matter of life, and it's a, it's a matter of survival. And if you lose and you, you are down, they knock you down, and literally, you get killed. And just last January, our workers were killed in the middle of the city. It was like a massacre. And, to, and these killers, who are they? They are military police, are hired thugs, and they are totally covered with impunity. And if we don't stand up for the voices of our workers be, who just stood up to make an extra, can you imagine, just an extra $5 they got killed? And Very if you unfair. Don't, yeah, if you don't, we are not fighting for the voice, and you con then you continue to live in fear. And if you are a leader, you represent the people and you live in fear, then the nation is finished. It's, it's easy to gauge the amount of um, passion that you have for this, all three of you guys, um, without a doubt. I mean, this is your homeland, right? Um, so that's a big part of it. Now, you had mentioned before that this is literally a fight. This is what it is. Um, in doing my research on you, Congresswoman, I had seen that you were at those front lines um, facing military people, letting them know what they should be doing. I mean, you see images on the Internet all the time about oppression, um, and this is something that you lived. I mean, like, th that in itself, I mean, it gives me goosebumps. I, I get chills because here I am, a privileged American, right, with all this freedom that I don't even really understand how to appreciate because I haven't been in your situation. Um, again, if you're just joining us, we're talking about human rights uh, worldwide, but specifically in Cambodia as well. And this isn't just for uh, men, but this is women, children, equality for all. Um, as of now, um, even more, more so, even back in history, Cambodia has been struggling with a lot of these things, like you had mentioned, genocide, war, conflict, um, it's just a reoccurring issue over and over again. Um, in my research, um, I had found out that the youth is a big part of the workforce there. Um, youth defined by the UN is any persons between 15 and 24 years of age. Now, the uh, workforce is made up of 25% 25, 25 of the whole entire workforce in Cambodia is made up of youths. Now, of this 25%, 94% of those people haven't even finished secondary education. Now, Western civilization education is huge. Um, recently, we've been hearing about um, the kidnappings which have happened in Chibok, Nigeria. The terrorist organization, Boko Haram, is behind this, and um, they don't believe in um, educating women. And that's why they're being taken from the schools. Over 300 girls have been taken. Um, so this is, this is a real thing. I mean, people are out there trying to educate themselves, and they're facing oppression. And it's, it's like, what for why? Um, tell us about that. I mean, I mean what, what's being done right now to get these kids educated? Well, the government of today in Cambodia has lo loses about $500 million per year of, for, in corruption. Can you imagine how many schools can be built with $500 million? And not talking just, the, the, big, the picture could be bigger. What is important is that we in the opposition, the Cambodia National Rescue Party in Cambodia, we're not waiting for what is not being done. In fact, we won this election that was rigged, taken away from us last July of 2013. We have, we have a platform. Number one, education must be free because 11 million out of the 17 million Cambodians make less than $2.35 a day. That's How nuts. can they afford education? So when, when we are in power, free education, on top of that, we, have, we will increase the salary of the teachers from $50 a month to $250 a month. How do we get, where is the money going to come from? By cutting down on corruption. Yep. We have to give vocational training so to our youth, as you said, who, who, never, who lost their, their, their childhood their youth because there's no education. They have to be skilled in order for them to find meaningful work so that they can live and then they can survive and they can also feed the family, the members of the families. Exactly. On, on top of, and beyond that, we have to give special, special, special care to the 10% of our youth who, who have made it through high school. They have to go to 
higher education, then they can get scholarships for those who are too poor. And they can also have financial aid. I came to America when I was 20 years old. I finished school. I have a master's degree in social work from UC Berkeley. I say it again, because education here is so important. And that's it exactly, the dream of our youth, youth anywhere. And if you are in power, you are in government, you are leaders, then what is the first thing you want to do is to invest in education and healthcare and social protection and to have rule of law so that we can have equal opportunity and we can talk about. Again, all of that is sunk into human rights, basic fundamental human rights. You hit the nail on the head a couple times there, without a doubt. Um, now, the unemployment rate in Cambodia is actually among one of the lowest worldwide. Um, but here's the problem. Um, the, uh, I believe it's the International Labor Organization. They've done their research, and they say that 80% of those employed are, are employed in the informal sector, which means that wages are very low. A lot of the time, wages aren't even regulated. Um, and I mean, it's just, they're, they're, they're unregistered even. I mean, there's no information out there. There's no way to regulate this or reform this. Um, so it's almost like it's a slap in the face. It's like, yeah, we have a low unemployment rate, but we're not paid anything. I mean, like our, our people can't even afford to feed themselves. Um, I mean, and that, that number spoke to me a lot. Um, what's being done right now to kind of reform this? Is there any, um, is there any employment uh, union being put into place? Again, yes, there are trade unions. In fact, our unions are very, very strong. However, they again are like the other uh, movement, like our farmers who have lost their land. Uh, all of this because the government of Cambodia that is not democratically elected is not paying attention to all of this. However, they, but they pay, they take care of the interests of their cronies, of the companies that are, allow them to uh, stay in power. That's why we, in opposition, we again, like in education, for employment for our workers, we have another, we have solutions. First of all, we have to implement, implement lab, the labor law, which is a very, um, a law that is accepted with international standards, accepted by the International Labor Organization. We have to give to protect the rights of the workers so that they, don't, they are not killed when they will go on strike. We are demanding Mean we are talking, we are supporting the workers who are demanding $160 as minimum wage. For, in 1995, they were at $45 a month as minimum wage. It has taken them until now. Now it's not even at, it's only at $100 as minimum wage. We in opposition, we say no, at least $160 so that all workers can have at least a decent meal each time they, they need to eat. So our workers uh, do not faint in the factories. We are calling on the international brands. In fact, some of them are in America. Levi Strauss, Gap, Nike, Puma, to pay your dues. You don't go to Cambodia to exploit the work, the labor of our workers. Go with us. Go with the workers who demand at least $160 as minimum wage. I don't think it's too much to ask. No, and it's Why only not? fair. Yes, I yeah. mean, what you're doing, I mean, like, you guys are all, like, you're heroes. Like, yeah, that's what you are. I mean, you're fighting an oppressive government with your words, and you're doing it the right way. I mean, like, what you're doing speaks to peace, speaks to equality for all. I mean, it's, it's just, it's outstanding. Um, now. We're talking about human rights here, right? Uh, we would definitely want to make the transition into uh, some of Jake's most recent work. He's the commissioner of the Human Rights Commission here in Lynn. Um, this has been a recent effort. Um, it's actually been in development for over years. Uh, but Jake, tell me a little bit about what this means for Lynn. Well, um, like, like Martin Luther King said, you know, injustice anywhere is a threat of justice everywhere. So what means to Lynn is a lot of Linners, Lin Cambodian 
or any kind of nationality that came to live in Lin, mo some of them escaped hardship, escaped brutality, escaped killings. You know, we all in the same boat. And I want to share, we want to share to these people and to people that do not know about human rights issues around the world, sort of like inform them so they know what's going on because ignorant is the enemy. You know, it could happen to you if you don't do something to help others around the world. Yep. So we have to um, be aware of what's going on because it could hit us anytime, you know, like a bullet if we don't take, you know, uh, precaution and be aware of the situation around the world. Yeah, I mean, that's it, why I'm really a concerned citizen. I'm also a victim and I'm, I would like to dedicate my life to fighting human rights, you know. But not only are you a victim, Jake, I mean, mm -hmm. you're doing something about it. And that's yep, huge. Doing something for human rights. Exactly. I mean, and, and you see it from a first first per perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, first person perspective. I mean, that's what you've gone through. I mean, I couldn't imagine it. I couldn't imagine it. And you know, I had gone through being 17, 16. And I fooled myself. I thought, you know, military was going to be for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, soon after I went into that recruitment office, I realized it wasn't. Um, and just like you had said, there are a lot of victims out there. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of victims, but not all of them are strong enough or even have the means to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest part about if you're going to learn anything from, from American uh, civilization or just the American culture, it's that you don't lay down when the going gets tough. You get up and you get in the face of the opposition and you let them know what you deserve and what's fair. Um, and I think that you're absolutely doing mm -hmm. that. And I, I had a dream when I was a child after I survived the war and you know the genocide and stuff. Just I want to be man. just like her. That's that's really. No, you, you know you know what, Jake. But my time um, hasn't come yet. No, I will your wait. time. Yes, your time is already here. It's here, man. Well, what is important is that you. In our uh, work as Commission uh, on Human Rights or Congresswoman, is that you don't let the victims remain as victims. They are survivors. Jake, you are a survivor, a very strong survivor. We are all survivors. The, we, the mentality, if you call us as victims, we will remain as victims forever. And that's why protection promotion and implementation of human rights is essential to build a country. I couldn't agree with you more. I want to say something else. When sure. I went to visit Cambodia, it breaks my heart when I see young children ages 10 working, selling. They don't go to, I ask them, you go to school, they cannot afford school. Right. That is heartbreaking because they and don't And they're deserve. working. And they're, they're working. working and they can't afford and school. They're, they're working and they're hitting rocks for, you know, you know, to make less a dollar to a make day. a less a dollar a day young kids you know it's really I think it's important it's, to recognize you know, something as well. I mean, like you had said, a lot of these companies that are over there hiring these people are American companies, yes. and they're trying to escape. Um, they're trying to escape human right regulations. Yeah. Number one, employment regulations, because that's exactly what they're doing: is they're taking advantage of the situation. Um, and I think it's important that these guys accept responsibility and hold themselves accountable for what they're doing and make it fair, um, without a doubt. I mean, it, the story is incredible, and I I, I strongly suggest that those at home get involved um, and we're actually going to talk to you Alex about that um, we had talked a little bit about the government how it's set up um, unelected officials they have a king in place it's a lot different than the way that we do things in America um, so one thing is is figuring out how we can get involved and how we can help um, go ahead take that one well uh, I, I I mean as a, a person that benefit quite a bit from opportunity that America has to offer, I, I want to take the opportunity to thank this country, this community, and particularly Lynn and Saugus, where I found, I, I call home for 20 years. Uh, you know, we came from a place where none of us uh, gone to school, none of us uh, have the dream to be successful or to be, or have opportunity to be anything and then we came here, uh, we start from scratch, and uh, look what now we have uh, with, with all the investment that America made to my family, particularly they produce, uh, I mean America produced seven bachelor degrees and two masters, and we all became very successful taxpayers, and now we want to pay back even further by invest and in helping Cambodia to reach uh, a goal uh, 
that she said uh, as a member of parliament. And hopefully, you know, you know, America have done some great thing around the world. I, I want to tell Lynn resident as well that uh, we had to be proud of our country, uh, not just here. Right. Uh, we, we funded quite a bit of a democratic process and democratic activity in Cambodia. You know, we, we funded the first national political debate in Cambodia in, in 2008. My brother-in-law happened to be a part of that uh, candidate that ran first televised, so that we, we, we've done some great things. We invest millions in, in, in human resource. And so, I, you know, I, I, I know that uh, it's not a concern to some people, but for Cambodian American in Lynn particularly, it, it means it's very dear to their heart because they still have some strong roots, strong connection to their, their birth and their homeland. Uh, this is their home now, but they're in their generation where they still have you know, the best of both worlds. They want to see Cambodia thrive as they go, as they thrive. And, and I think, uh, you know, I, like I said, I, I like to take this opportunity to thank America and to Lynn uh, for the opportunity to enjoy freedom and, and enjoy the right as a, as a citizen and as a, a human being, that this is the right that is engraved in universally, you know. Yeah, I think that, you know, you hit the nail on the head there. And the big thing is, is don't thank, don't thank America. Use that. Take advantage of it. Now you have an opportunity to go with it. That's what it's about. Uh, that's about all the time that we're going to have for this edition of the Link Cam TV show. Guys, I want to thank you again for coming in. I want to um, stress to you, continue doing what you're doing. Um, there is no end to it. It's going to be an ongoing thing for the rest of your lives, and I commend you on that very much so. Um, you're making positive impacts, and Cambodia is on the up and up. Um, from the studio here at Lincam TV, I'm Sean Donahue wishing you all the best.